We're going to look at the second and third law of thermodynamics in this video and try to determine exactly what they mean. And then uh, the next video I'm going to make is going to explain how all of that applies to chemical reactions and especially we're going to move into chemical reactions in a biochemistry setting. So by biochemistry what I mean is uh, usually the body temperature is a little bit higher than what you would have a normal reaction going so adjusting for temperature. Usually the pH inside the body is a little bit different so adjusting for pH and that sort of thing. So let's dig into the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, first of all it's defined in a lot of different ways it's, or it's explained in a lot of different ways. So a system proceeds from ordered to disordered. Um, that's basically the statistical view of thermodynamics. Um, the other, another way of saying it is that the change of entropy of the system and its surroundings is zero for reversible reactions, but the change of entropy for a system and its surroundings is greater than zero for irreversible reactions. Uh, the third thing is energy flows spontaneously to be more spread out. So you have energy, it just flows outward. So for everything we're going to do, we're going to define uh, entropy. Entropy is going to be defined as a measure of disorder. So how much disorder is there or how much randomness. Random, that's an M, randomness. So mathematically entropy is defined as the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of W. And by W, it doesn't mean work, it's talking about the, the number of microstates. So number of microstates. And this K, it's not a reaction rate, it's the Boltzmann constant. So Boltzmann constant. And the Boltzmann constant is actually derived from a combination of the gas law constant and Avogadro's number. But it's actually, the number is actually 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd. And so the, mic the number of microstates is, uh, is basically how many different possible positions or or situations can this system be in. And so in a given system, or the system the way it is, the number of microstates that it, that it takes up is, uh, is W. And so really we're not, we're not really interested in what the entropy is. What we're interested in is the change of entropy because if entropy increases, if everything else stays the same, if enthalpy stays the same, temperature stays the same, everything else stays the same, if entropy increases then the reaction will go spontaneously. If entropy decreases then the re however the reaction is written the reverse of that reaction will be spontaneous. So the change of entropy can actually drive a reaction. So the change of entropy is, is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of W final pl uh, minus Boltzmann constant times the natural log of W initial. Now this is ba the basis of statistical thermodynamics and calculating the number of microstates really isn't my thing and so we're going to actually simplify that equation so the ds entropy is equal to dq the heat transfer divided by the temperature so I don't have a whole lot of room for temperature but I hope you can see the t there so in the temperature it's, uh, it's going to be measured in Kelvin, of course. And so what's interesting here is, and I'm going to try to move everything up, everything out of the way so we can get, okay. Okay, so this is what we're focused on right here, is that uh, the change in entropy, the instantaneous change in entropy is equal to the instantaneous change in the transfer of heat divided by the temperature. Now, if you remember the third law of thermodynamics, we said that 
Uh, a perfect crystal has zero entropy at zero Kelvin. The change in entropy, it's, it's it got absolutely zero entropy. What happens if you divide something by zero? It becomes undefined. So this, is, this isn't a perfect equation. There are some, we're basically just monitoring a change. So you can't, if you're talking about absolute entropy, it does go to zero, but there is no definable change of entropy at zero degrees. So it would be undefined. Now, the third law of thermodynamics, like I said, it, we've never been able to reach zero Kelvin, and so um, actually using the third law of thermodynamics to get something to zero uh, entropy is, uh, is not even practical, but it does give us a way to calculate the absolute entropy. So the, the entropy is equal to the integration from zero to a given temperature T times the heat capacity times the derivative of the natural log of the temperature. And so, just like I said a second ago, I'm not really interested in the absolute entropy. I don't care how many microstates it's in, I don't care what the absolute number is. The only thing I really care about is the change of entropy because that tells me a lot about a chemical reaction. Is it going to proceed spontaneously or is it is it going to not proceed spontaneously? And so basically the third law, the only thing that I know that it's good for is in calculating entropy or the absolute entropy, but it still has absolutely no use in the in just uh, uh, first or second year biochemistry, or I mean first or second semester biochemistry, because you don't need to know the absolute entropy. You only need to know the change of entropy. And just to kind of give you a, a sneak peek, the change of entropy can be calculated if you know delta H, uh, delta G, and the temperature. So you, you can know uh, whether or not what the entropy of a reaction is going to be based on these three variables. So um, calculating the absolute entropy, absolutely worthless. And so the third law of thermodynamics to me in biochemistry is worthless. Feel free, if I'm wrong, uh, feel free to go ahead and put a comment right down here and tell me why I'm wrong because I would love to know.